This conference will now be recorded. Good morning, everyone. I'm glad you could join us this morning. I think more people will probably log in as we get started. I'm Claudia Holland, Chief of the Bureau of Library Development in the Division of Library and Information Services. It's great to have you on the call this morning. Uh, sometimes when we have just a few people, it's nice because then we can really delve into some, um, some issues and talk more personally, perhaps. Um, this is a continuation of our series of open online discussions for library staff throughout, uh, all, throughout Florida from all types of libraries. We hope that you'll feel comfortable sharing your ideas, your concerns, your plans, frustrations, uh, fears, um, whatever you want to share today. We are here to listen and to offer our, our input as well. These sessions are really for you. Uh, we want you to share with us what you're comfortable with. Uh, and bring up topics that you're interested in learning more about or that you want to share that you're doing in your library. I'd like to mention just a few housekeeping items before we get started. Uh, we have muted everyone at this point, but we'll unmute you once the discussion begins, and that means everybody. Uh, so please unmute uh, uh, mute yourself until you're ready to talk, and then be sure to unmute yourself. Uh, chat is available, and you may have noticed that GoToMeeting has sort of a new look. So if you're sort of um, confused on how to get into chat, just click on that bubble, you know, the talking bubble thing that's in the top right-hand corner of your screen, and the chat will open. It's much bigger than it used to be, which is really nice because that means that we can keep scrolling uh, and uh, we scroll less actually <laughs> um, so if you uh, don't have a microphone be sure to share your ideas or your questions in chat uh, we'll be happy we'll be monitoring that and happy to share um, your thoughts and your questions with others uh, even if you cannot speak uh, if um, you get dropped or you're having bandwidth issues please turn off your webcam until you want to speak we do want you to share your webcam, though, if you have one. Uh, I don't know about you, but it's awfully nice to be able to see people, to talk to them, especially during this time when we, we're not as um, visually engaged with each other face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, so please feel free to talk without your webcam, but if you'd like to share your webcam as well, we'd love that. Uh, this session will be recorded and made available on our YouTube channel for you and for those who are unable to uh, join us today. So let's get started. Um, I want to start with kind of a, an obvious topic uh, uh, in that we know that Florida's COVID cases continue to increase, and that, of course, is concerning to everyone. Uh, I'd like to ask you how you're managing. What you know? What? Uh, how is this affecting what you're doing? Um, in Tallahassee, for example, state buildings are still not open to the public, and those of us who aren't teleworking, even though we're in the same building, we're meeting virtually. Um, uh, we're we're practicing uh, social distancing and and being very very careful. Uh, and, and considerate of each other. Um, so how are you managing in your libraries? Or even at home? You may not be in your library yet. If you could let us know too and chat what uh, library you're affiliated with, that would be great. Um, 
I see that we have uh, someone from Eustis with us today. Uh, we have several people from BLD who are with us today. Uh, we have someone who's calling in. Great. So I'll just I'll just uh, sort of reify what I just said um, about how are you managing at your library or from home if uh, as you're working, um, how are you managing with the increasing cases and how are you feeling? Kristen wrote in the chat, she said, we're still closed at Hillsborough Community College in Tampa. We have plans to begin returning to campus next week, but that might change with the great number of cases reported here in Hillsborough, Tampa area. Yeah. I think that people's plans change on the fly. You kind of have to be really flexible right now. Uh, and, and that can be very disconcerting to some degree, but also um, reassuring that people are being cautious and uh, aware of what their staff or their colleagues' uh, uh, concerns are. So how has the surge affected your practices? Like Kristen said, uh, yeah, she's also saying they're anxious to get back in the library, but they're older and, um, and she's concerned that, that she, she wants them to stay home. So how are you currently feeling about opening your library to the public, to students, to faculty? Um, I had a colleague from an, another university who said that she had written a plan for a reopening and as soon as she wrote it, she felt like it was out of date. Let's talk about statistics then. Uh, we've had a lot of questions about collecting statistics that are meaningful um, and that reflect the shift uh, from face-to-face -to, -face to virtual programming or uh, education uh, about your library's holdings or services that you provide. Um, what are you doing differently? What uh, I, I, I have um, uh, I have been hearing from some people that they're, you know, what are they going to do in the fall? Um, especially for adult programming in public libraries or for teens. Uh, I think the children's the, the summer reading program has has morphed <laughs> quite a bit uh, for the summer. But how about adults, teens, and students? How are you reaching these people? Casey, would you um, pipe in here for a moment and share what you've heard from people about programming? Sure. Um, of course, most of what I've heard really relates to summer reading, but I imagine some of these same programs and resources that they're using will, will filter into the fall. Um, 
for teens especially, I know a lot of libraries have been doing virtual escape rooms. Um, some of them have been creating them using Google Docs because it's a free resource that they can use. Um, some libraries who were able to afford it have subscribed to educational resources like Breakout EDU, so the escape rooms are already created for them. Um, so they're then using either Zoom chats or Discord chats or something like that to create a live program using these virtual resources. Um, I'm, I'm hearing a lot about Zoom usage, so some people are even doing uh, book club meetings through Zoom and other sort of chat, chat features, or they're using Facebook groups as well. So I know that youth services folks are starting to kind of turn their attention towards planning for the fall. And um, I know at least some of the conversations I've seen, a lot of them are going to move some of these virtual programs forward. Mm -hmm. I know we have some academic people online. So how are you handling um, outreach to students? What is your plan in terms of um, engaging students and faculty and the resources that you have and the services that you can provide? I think programming uh, right now is particularly challenging because um, you have to get the word out, you have to uh, engage people, and how do you do that in the best possible way that maximizes your time as well as um, reaches that audience that, that is so critical? Kristen wrote in the chat, um, she said, we're tagging along with the college-wide messaging that is going out to students. Student services includes the library and their messages, along with financial aid, counseling, et cetera. We also promote our services to faculty, but it's really hard to get the word out to students. Yeah. Uh, Kristen, are students going to summer school? Is summer school open at your college? Yes, okay. So do you think that faculty are helping you get the word out or that's kind of a hard one to measure, isn't it? <laughs> uh, no, that, uh, I don't even know how to, how to address that in terms of reaching them. Yeah. So students are in online classes and she's teaching several, but students feel kind of forced into online classes. Yeah, yeah, well, it's just the nature of the beast, huh? Um, yeah, it's not the same. So do you think in terms of on, campuses that do start to open, is there something you could do in the open air? Um, at a university I used to work at, we had kind of like a hot dog stand that we morphed into a, um, a mobile reference desk. <laughs> uh, and um, uh, it was a great way to, we didn't serve hot dogs, but we did uh, actually, um, you know, it was kind of a, an attraction in a very central location on campus to reach 
uh, students and engage with them. So if, if your campus is opening and they are not just virtual, doing something open air might, might be helpful to you. Emily's mentioned that the uh, plan has uh, hosting is hosting some great conversations as well, and uh, the academic librarian's uh, conversation is tomorrow, and she's posted the uh, link to that if you're interested in attending. And I see that Carol is on the call. Carol, did you, would you like to talk about um, what your conversations have been like? Well, we've had quite a bit of participation. There's usually about 30 people on the call. Um, right. And we usually break up into smaller groups so that it be a little more, more participation, you know, and oh. breaking up into smaller groups. And we usually have a set of questions that for people to address just to direct the conversation a bit. Uh -huh. But there's been a lot of give and take on it. It's It's been a great conversation. Good. Thank you for being on. Mm -hmm. um, so I think I, I, I mentioned something about collecting statistics, but jump, jump to something else maybe. Um, I, I do want you to know that tomorrow at two o'clock, we're presenting a webinar on counting programs in 2019-2020. Um, uh, we very much encourage you to uh, attend to get the word out. We'll be sharing that information on our listservs and uh, in social media about our program, our webinar. Um, we, of course, will field any questions that you might have about um, uh, data that we're collecting uh, from particularly public libraries, but I think our questions may be of use to academic libraries as well, um, uh, just in terms of how, you know, how to collect in a, in a sort of um, uh, consistent manner and, um, and, and report those same statistics to whomever you want to share uh, them with uh, in terms of your uh, governance structure or um, you know your your uh, communities. Um, I'd really like to know from those of you who are online. Uh, do you have specific questions that we might be able to address tomorrow? about statistics in your libraries. It's a big shift from face-to-face -face, uh, data collection to, to virtual uh, collection. Uh, and being consistent, of course, is, is critical to whatever you plan to do. Yes, if you would please share the registration link, that would be great uh, in chat. Uh, speaking of uh, communication, 
uh, which we are all trying to get a, a different handle on, I think, in today's world. Um, do you find communication among your library staff, your colleagues, or with administration or whomever to be better, the same? Surely different. <laughs> um, given the situation, what what do you think? Has Have things improved? Um, in your library in terms of communication because you've sort of been forced into this different kind of world where you have to communicate, um, I think, more specifically than, than perhaps you do face-to-face. Um, -face. Uh, I know I have um, a, a, a staff member who comes in once a week, uh, and I, I kind of, I, I'm so used to not having many people here that I forget to come and to go by and say hello. So I wanted, I want to say to Emily, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so Emily, what do you think about uh, coming in and staying or staying home and working? Oh, you know, um, it's still sort of a, a, can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, no, it's a transition um, to being back in the building at all. So uh, I, I wish I could say that it, is getting easier um mm -hmm. but it's nice to, to have the opportunity to reconnect with some of my colleagues mm -hmm. um in regards to other libraries i know that we have those who are still not open yet or those who have never uh been closed at least in terms of working together and uh, i think for those, I, my question would be, how it, how did it change when the public started coming back? Thanks, Emily. Uh, Robert, I don't know if I can't remember if you're open at your library yet. Yeah. Uh, he says he is open and Pasco. Great. And how has that been for you? And and your colleagues. Hey, can you hear me? I think I got the mic to work. Yeah. Yay. Yes, Yay. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's been interesting, of course. You know, everyone's a little on edge, especially with the rising numbers, but we're taking a lot of precautions and all that, and we don't have a lot of people coming in. I mean, it's more than I expected, uh -huh. um, but we're also a um, site for distributing masks for the county. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Uh, Jasmine, how, how are things going for you and um, Eustace? Ah, uh, they're open too. And how are you feeling about that? How do your colleagues feel? Okay. Uh, she's she's not quite sure.
So I think I've asked this before, but I, I think that it changes frequently too. But how, how has your role changed in, in, at your library or has it changed in the last three months or so? Um, have you taken on more responsibilities? Um, have you, uh, have you, have your, you know, what you've been doing, has it changed a lot? Um, have you uh, partnered with uh, external organizations? Oh, Jasmine, this is great. This is her second week on her job. We're really happy to have you here. So Jasmine, your role has not changed yet, I hope, <laughs> since you just got on board. I know that here in uh, in the bureau, uh, we have um, we have some staff who uh, have taken on a lot of resp more responsibility, or their role has changed. Um, and part of that is um, because of how BLD is changing, but also because we are down some staff. Um, and it, it, you know, when you have um, a shortage of staff, you have you you have to sort of step up to the plate. And fortunately, I, I have great colleagues, and they have stepped up to the plate. And um, and we're we're doing the best we can with uh, uh, fewer staff, and we're supporting you all and your libraries as much as we possibly can, and hope that you'll reach out to us whenever you, you need us. That's, that's our role. We want to be sure that you know that uh, we're here, that you can count on us to support you and to um, provide you with any, any um, any support that we can that, um, you know, given our own restrictions and our, uh, uh, your governance um, structure. Kathy, I see that you are on. Would you mind talking a little bit about uh, the resource sharing platform, Flynn Share It? Sure. Um, the the division has recently embarked on a new um, statewide resource sharing platform called Flynn Share It. We are working with um, Autographics, who has implemented Flynn Share It in numerous other states, and this will offer patron-initiated interlibrary loan. Um, it works through a Z3950 or as a hybrid model. And patrons will be able to go into basically a Florida catalog and find the item that they want, request that item, and then, then it's sent to them. Um, so it should, it should prove to be a staff saver, um, a time saver, I mean, <laughs> and we have had tremendous interest in it and have been signing libraries up to be on the platform. The, go, the estimated go live date is August 17th, so if you want your library to be a part of that first wave of live libraries. We're asking that um, libraries have their applications into us by July 10th, but we will be taking applications on an ongoing basis. So if you don't get it in by July 10th, there is still always an opportunity. Great. And I know you've been sending out information in your newsletter, and we also have something and the building success newsletter about signing up if uh if people would like to to explore that is that right yes mm -hmm. great 
and if anyone has any questions, um, they can ask him now, or they can always reach out, reach out to me. If you if you go to our division's website and just search for statewide resource sharing, it should come up. Okay, great. Um, thank you, Kathy, for that information. Are there issues in particular that you would like to bring up today? Um, Jasmine, not to pick on you, but as a new a new uh, staff member at uh, Eustis, um, what kinds of information are you looking for um, to help you get started in your library? What kind of advice could we could we share with you? We have a lot of people online here who are willing to help you. Okay, she's interested in marketing and display things. She came from an academic background. Okay, um, and so is um, is looking for now. Are you talking about online marketing, or are you talking about something in your library? in-house, okay, activities and so on. Okay, well, that's good. So when you say marketing, are you talking about marketing uh, materials or the library services or what what specifically are you interested in I think that anyone here can probably share any marketing ideas that they might have okay So Kathy, thank you for sharing that information about uh, about resources that the state library has for librarians throughout the state. I, I just want to remind you all that um, one of our uh, missions is to collect materials for libraries um, throughout the state. Uh, we have a great collection of um, ebooks and other uh, you know journals, all kinds of information available to you, uh, not only through the State Library but also through the FEL, the Florida Electronic Library. Okay. That's interesting. She'd love to do color therapy display with books of certain colors.
Okay, if there are no other comments or uh, topics that you would like to bring up, um, I'm happy to give you back about 20 minutes of your time. <laughs> um, I do want to uh, remind you that we'll meet again on July 20th. I think a lot of people are probably still on, uh, on um, I guess you would call it vacation, on holiday after, after the uh, holiday weekend. Um, so we're hoping to have a lot of participation on July 20th. Um, thank you to those of you who were able to join us today. Um, we'll meet at the same time, 10 o'clock Eastern on July the 20th. There is a recording available of this uh, session. Uh, there will be a, a recording available of this session on our uh, YouTube channel if you'd like to refer to that. Until then, be safe, stay healthy, and please let us know what we can do to help you. Bye-bye.